solution is a chapter in chemistry in which we study about the states of matter of the components of the solution the components of the solution are solute and the solvent their concentration we study in this chapter finding out their concentration by various methods in different ways of expressing the concentration and various properties of the particles of solute when they are dissolved in the solution is studied in this chapter we find solution in our surrounding in various forms like the alloy which we see around us like brass made up of copper and zinc bronze made up of copper and tin steel made up of iron carbon chromium manganese and many other elements together they form an alloy gemstone minerals these are all solid solutions when it comes to liquid solution the solvent is liquid and solute can be solid liquid or gas like gas dissolved in water in the form of bubble or foam liquid dissolved in liquid like alcohol dissolved in water or milk is an example of a liquid in liquid in which fats are dissolved in water and solid in liquid there are many examples like sugar and water salt and water in a binary solution that means the solution which contains two components solute one solute and one solvent there the component which is in large quantity is considered as solvent as compared to the other component which is in smaller quantity like when we say solid in liquid we mean to say that the quantity of liquid is more than the solid and when we say liquid in solid then we mean to say that the solvent is solid and the solute is liquid example when we dissolve sugar in water then this is an example of solid dissolved in liquid now the dough which we prepare by adding water into the wheat flour to be to make breads is an example in which liquid is dissolved in solid depending upon the quantity of solute and solvent we decide which component of the solution is solvent and which component of the solute is which component of the solution is solute the types of solution is also broadly classified in three ways gaseous solution liquid solution and solid solution in gaseous solution the solvent will always be gas and solute can be solid liquid or gas example gas in gas is example of air the oxygen cylinder which is used in clinics in hospitals containing oxygen and helium the air which is there in the atmosphere is a mixture of gas this is an example of air in air next example is of liquid in gas the mist which we have in the air in the morning or the insecticide which is sprayed in the air these are the examples of liquid in air if somebody sneezes in the air and there are liquid droplets fine liquid droplets in the air this is also an example of liquid in air solid in air the example of solid in air is dust particles in air now next type of solution is 
liquid solution in liquid solution the solvent has to be liquid in state and the three different types of solution in this case would be solid in liquid which we will ordinarily call as solution liquid in liquid is generally called as emulsion and gas in liquid like foam or bubble in case of liquid in liquid which forms emulsion there are two types of emulsion oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion here by the word oil we mean to say a liquid which is not completely soluble in water like milk is an example of oil in water in which the fatty substance is dissolved in water whereas example of water in oil could be the example of paint in which there are oily substances which contains the pigment of the color and which is diluted with the help of water so that it can be sprayed easily third type of solution is gaseous solution in gaseous solution again there are three types of solutions like gas in gas as we had discussed in the first type also gas in gas is simply mixture of air so maybe the gaseous solution we had discussed in the first go so we'll take up solid solution in which the solvent molecule is solid so we'll take the example of gas in solid gas in solid can be seen in the form of pumice stone sponge which when put in water you will find that the bubbles come out that means the air trapped in the empty space comes out of it that means gas is present in the empty spaces of the particles in solid liquid in solid all the gels are the example of liquid in solid like dough prepared by adding water in corn flour next type of solution is gas in solid is done liquid is and solid in solid solid in solid type of solution means <clears throat> both solute and solvent are solid like alloy gemstone minerals etc now how do we find out the concentration of these solutions the concentration of solution means the amount of solute present in unit quantity of the solvent we can measure the concentration of solution in various ways like molarity molality weight by weight percentage weight by volume percentage mole fraction and a few more what is molarity molarity means number of moles of solute present in 1 liter of solution how can we find out the moles of solute we can find out the moles of solute by dividing the known mass of the sample with its molar mass next is molality molality means moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of the solvent again here mole can be found out by dividing the sample weight with its molar weight next is weight by weight percentage if we talk about a binary solution and we know the both we know both the weights of solute and solvent then if we divide weight of the solute with total weight of the solute and solvent 
multiplied by 100, we will get weight by weight percentage. Similarly, weight by volume percentage can be obtained by taking the weight of the solute and dividing it by the volume of the solvent and multiply by 100. Similarly, volume by volume percentage can be found out in which we divide the volume of the solute with total volume of the solution and multiply by 100. It is as simple as that. There could be some numericals in which these con concepts need to be applied. These numericals can be practiced by first of all solving a few solved questions and then trying out a few questions which are not solved. Next we will study about solubility of the solute in the solution. Solubility means the quantity of solute which can be completely dissolved in a solvent at a particular temperature. It is important to make a note over here that at different temperature the solubility may change because at different temperature intermolecular space of the particles in the solution changes. Say for example if one spoon of common salt can be dissolved in one cup of water and no more salt can be dissolved in it at room temperature, then this solution would be called as saturated salt solution. But if we warm the solution slowly, then the particles of water will go little away from each other an interparticular space will increase. Due to increase in the interparticular space, more salt can be dissolved. In that case, at a higher temperature, when more salt is dissolved in a solvent, then such kind of solution is called as supersaturated solution. Very, there are various factors on which the solubility of a solute depends. The solubility of a solute depends upon the state of matter of solute and solvent. If the state of matter of solute is such that it does not have escaping tendency, then it will be easily soluble. But if the nature and the escaping tendency of the solute from the solvent will be more, then it will be less soluble. However, by increasing pressure and decreasing temperature, solubility can be increased. But that needs consideration of the state of matter of both solute and solvent. So the factors on which the solubility of solute in a solvent depends are state of matter of the solute and solvent, temperature of the solvent, and pressure exerted over the solvent and nature of solute and solvent. These are the factors on which the solubility of a particular component in a solvent depends. Let us take some specific example like the effect of temperature in solubility of gaseous solute. When we increase temperature of any solution, then the gaseous molecules entropy increases. The escaping tendency of the gaseous molecule increases. And due to increase in the intermolecular space of the solvent, the solvent is not able to catch hold of the gaseous molecules. As a result of which, due to high kinetic energy of the gaseous molecule, it being a gas with increase in temperature, the solubility decreases. That is why you will find that the aerated drinks in which carbon dioxide is filled in is kept at low temperature. 
All such drinks which are aerated and contains gaseous substances in it are kept at low temperature and the gases are also filled up in the solution at low temperature. Because with increase in temperature, the pressure of the gas will increase and the cap of the bottle may be pressurized to open up. Similarly, similar is the case with increase or decrease of pressure of a gas on a liquid. If there is high pressure of a gaseous molecule on a liquid, then solubility of that gas in the liquid will increase, provided the gas should be soluble in water. That is why filling up of carbon dioxide gas in aerated drinks is done with high pressure whereas if temperature is increased and pressure is also increased then there will be no change in the solubility so with increase in pressure the temperature also has to be lowered to increase the solubility of a particular gas in liquid so solubility of a gas in a liquid depends upon pressure of the gas on the liquid, temperature of the liquid solvent and the nature of the gas and the liquid solvent. On the contrary, if we talk about solubility of solid on liquid, then there is less effect of solubility of solid particles in the liquid if we increase or decrease pressure because the solid solutes has very less escaping tendency. Their entropy does not increase to that extent that it can form vapor and come out. So with, it does not require high pressure to be dissolved. However, contrary to the case in which gases were dissolved in liquid, with increase in temperature in case of solid in liquid, solubility increases because the interparticular space in the solvent molecule increases. With increase in the interparticular space in the solvent, more space for the solute to get dissolved is created. As a result, with increase in the temperature, the solubility of solid solute increases. So this is the difference of the effect of temperature and pressure on gas dissolved in liquid and solid dissolved in liquid. In case of liquid to be dissolved in liquid, mostly the nature of the liquid is considered. For this we use the concept like dissolves like. Like polar solvent will be able to dissolve polar solution. Polar solute will be able to be dissolved in polar solution like alcohol will be easily soluble in water because they form hydrogen bonding with the water. But long chain fatty acids will not be soluble in water because the hydrocarbon chain are hydrophobic in nature. So solubility of a liquid in a liquid depends upon the nature of the molecules of solute and solvent. Now, we will study a little bit more about the effect of pressure on the gas to find out what will be the effect of solubility of a gas on a liquid due to increase in pressure. This was studied by Henry and he gave a law that the mole fraction of the solute, gaseous solute dissolved in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure exerted by the gas on the solution. That means if pressure exerted by the gas on the solution is denoted by P, then it will be proportional to the mole fraction of the gaseous molecule. 
now we can change this proportionality relation into an equation by taking a constant called as henry's constant so the pressure of a gas on a liquid p will be equal to henry's constant multiplied by mole fraction in order to define henry's law constant kh p is equal to kh into x kh can be defined as the pressure of a gas at a particular temperature on a liquid when the mole fraction of the gas is unity as i said that p is equal to kh into x or chi where x or chi stands for mole fraction of the gas if we make chi that means mole fraction of the gas to be unity then p will be equal to kh so we can define kh to be the pressure of the gas on a liquid in which the gas is acting as a solute such that the quantity of solute or the concentration of the solute is 1 in terms of mole fraction in terms of mole fraction if we say that chi is equal to 1 then we mean to say that there is only one gaseous component so one fraction means only one component is there there is no other component of gas in it if there will be more than one gaseous molecule then we will talk about the partial pressure of each of each one of the gases like p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4 will be equal to total pressure this expression wherein total pressure of any total pressure on any solution is given as sum of the individual pressures of the component gases is called as dalton's law of partial pressure according to dalton's law of partial pressure in a gaseous solution or in a solution in which gas is there in liquid the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of each one of the components of the gases next we will talk about the solubility <clears throat> of non volatile solutes and volatile solutes in solution what is the meaning of volatility volatility means ability of a solvent molecule to evaporate on its own by gaining temperature from the atmosphere is water a volatile solvent yes it is because water forms vapor on its own by absorbing heat from the surrounding is alcohol or ethanol volatile in nature yes it is now how can we compare the volatility of these two solvents alcohol and water alcohol and water both are volatile but alcohol forms vapor faster than that of water as a result of which it can be considered that alcohol is more volatile than water now if we consider the solubility of the volatile or the nature of the so solution of such a solution in which volatile substances dissolved in liquid then we will consider just the case of gases dissolved in liquid because with increase in temperature volatility also increases with increase in temperature escaping tendency of the molecule increases now when we talk about solids dissolved in liquid such that 
the solutes are not volatile then we consider the case as non volatile solute dissolved in water for non volatile solutes dissolved in water two types of solutions can be formed true solution or ideal solution and non ideal solution which type of solution do we call as ideal solution ideal solutions are those solution in which there is no change in the volume when solute is added to the liquid such kind of solution obeys raoult's law what does raoult's law mean raoult's law says that partial pressure of one of the components of the solvent is directly proportional to its mole fraction so more will be the mole fraction of a particular solvent more will be its partial pressure to find out the equation for this we can take the expression as p to be the partial pressure of a particular component and chi to be the mole fraction of that component so p will be proportional to chi that means if mole fraction of the solute is increased then if mole fraction of the solute is increased then the partial pressure of that solute in the solvent will also also increase such that p will be proportional to chi now we can take the partial pressure or the pressure of that particular component when it is not in solution in that case we call that pressure to be the pressure in its po form or the standard form we denote it by giving a not sign over p so p that means partial pressure will be equal to p not into chi this expression is also called as raoult's law and it is just like henry's law in henry's law the partial pressure of the gas was talked about and in raoult's law the pressure of the non volatile liquid dissolved in a solvent is talked about depend this uh, increase or decrease in the partial pressure by adding solute in the solvent is one of the properties which we call as collective property or colligative property colligative property of the solution means the properties which depends upon the number of particles in the solution not the nature of the particle so the increase or decrease in the partial pressure of uh, any solute in a solvent or even the solvent molecule partial pressure of the solute solvent molecule relative change in that is is a type of colligative property colligative property means the property of a solute or solution which depends upon the number of particles dissolved in it not the nature of the particles there are a few more colligative properties we can use those colligative properties to find out the molecular mass of the substance and other parameters like relative change in the partial pressure when the solution is added with any solute now when we talk about pure solvent then its pressure will be p not but no sooner a solute will be added into that then its pressure will become p is equal to p not into mole fraction of the solvent so as solute will increase obviously the solvents composition will decrease 
so we decrease in the solvent's composition partial pressure of the solvent will decrease as a result the relative change in the partial pressure of the solvent will also decrease so this change in the partial pressure of the solvent on dissolution of non volatile solute in the solution is given by raoult's laws second form of the expression delta p by p that means relative change in the vapor pressure is is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute where delta p is p that means pressure at the pure form minus partial pressure of the solvent divided by the pressure of the solvent when there was no solute added multiplied is equal to the mole fraction of the solute that means chai solute next is increase in boiling point what is boiling point boiling point is that temperature at which the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation or boiling point is that temperature at which the pressure exerted by the vapor on the atmosphere is equal to atmospheric pressure that means the atmospheric pressure and the vapor pressure equalizes at boiling point please note that water can evaporate at any temperature but it boils at 100 degrees c so evaporation is not boiling evaporation means conversion of liquid into vapor which can happen at any temperature but boiling point is unique at boiling point rate of evaporation will be equal to rate of condensation and at this point the vapor pressure of the liquid will be is equal to the atmospheric pressure no vapor pressure can be more than the atmospheric pressure because we have large quantity of air in our atmosphere which exerts one atmospheric pressure and no vapor pressure can be more than that at a state of boiling of any liquid so when solute particles are added in the sol solvent then on the surface as well as in the bulk on the surface as well as in the bulk of the solvent the solute particles occupy space we know that evaporation is a surface phenomena due to this occupation of the space on the surface of the liquid less number of liquid particles are there on the surface as compared to the pure solvent as a result we require more temperature to be given to get that much of vapor which can equalize with the atmospheric pressure this is because less quantity of water is there at the surface of the solution as compared to its pure form of the solvent so more temperature will be required to get that much of vapor as much can be equal to the atmospheric pressure therefore by addition of a non volatile solute by addition of a non volatile solute in a solvent the boiling point increases in case of freezing point depression of freezing point takes place depression of freezing point means the temperature required to convert the pure solvent when there is no solute in that is more than the temperature required to freeze a solvent when it contains solute particles because the solute particles increases the density of the solution and brings the molecules closer to each other when we freeze a substance then substance actually contracts and it comes together to form a crystal so addition of this solute to increase its density aids to this phenomenon as a result of which with addition of non volatile solute the freezing point depresses at a lower temperature a solution can get frozen as compared to the solvent therefore you will see that ice is preserved 
when sub some substances has to be carried long distance with the help of ice by putting ice into the salt so ice and salt together is also called as freezing mixture by adding salt by adding salt the salt solid ice its melting its uh, melting point decreases as a result of which it it can remain in the solid form for longer time this property is used for clearing of the roads in icy areas where snow falls are there where snow falls are there and the snow has to be removed there if any vehicle is brought to separate the ice from the road it may so happen that the ice can melt and the vehicle may start slipping to keep the ice in its solid form so that it can be removed by drozing salt is sprinkled so the salt sprinkled on the ice makes the ice the tem makes the freezing point of the ice get depressed so with the addition of non volatile solute in a solvent depression in freezing point takes place another colligative property is osmotic pressure what is osmosis osmosis is a phenomena in which if two liquids with two different concentration are separated by a semi permeable membrane then the solvent molecules moves from a region of high concentration of the solvent to the low concentration of the solvent i am not talking about solution but if we change the words definition would little will change little bit osmosis is the process in which two liquids or two solutions having different concentration when separated by a semi permeable membrane then the solvent molecule moves from the zone of low concentration of solution to high concentration of the solvent until the concentration of both the solution becomes same or the osmotic pressure of both the solution becomes same or both the solution becomes isotonic in nature the word isotonic means both the solution should have same osmotic pressure if osmotic pressure of the solvent will be same on the both side of the semi permeable membrane there will be no need of the solvent molecules to move across from low concentration zone to high concentration zone example when we put resin or kismis in water then the kismis contains lots of sugar in it so it is a high concentration zone whereas the water in which we put it that is low concentration zone so what happens water enters inside the resin or dried grape through the peel of the resin because it is semi permeable till the resin swells up to its maximum limit when it swells up then the pressure of the solvent inside the resin and the pressure of the solvent outside the resin becomes equal and no more solvent is absorbed or no more solvent is moved through the semi permeable membrane this is called as osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure can be found out just by using the formula which is similar to equation of state we know that pv is equal to nrt let us take p to be pi here because here p is pi for the osmotic pressure of the solvent and not the gas so pi being the osmotic pressure let it be pi into volume of the solvent is equal to number of moles of the solvent multiplied by gas constant into temperature so pi will be equal to nrt divided by v in this way we can calculate the value of pi in each of these colligative properties be it 
partial pressure of the non volatile solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the solute or increase in boiling point that means delta t boiling point proportional to the molality of the gas or depression in freezing point that means delta t freezing point is equal to cryoscopic constant into molality or pi is equal to nrt by v in all these equations mole fractions molality or moles are used so wherever molality mole fraction or moles are used it has a relation with the sample weight like in case of mole fraction we can find out the number of moles relative number of moles as compared to total number of moles and further moles one mole is equal to sample weight divided by its molar weight so by converting these concentration terms with respect to the terms related to its masses we can find out the molecular masses of the substance so we can harness or we can exploit these equations to find out the molecular mass or calculate the molecular mass by observing the colligative properties of the solution if we are able to find out relative change in the pressure of the liquid if we are able to find out the depression in the freezing point if we are able to find out the increase in boiling point or if we are able to find out the osmotic pressure by any experiment then we can calculate the molecular mass of a particular solute by finding out the molecular mass of a particular solute the nature and the name of the solute can also be found out because mostly the molecular mass of solutes are unique properties of those molecules without remembering the derived formula for finding out the molecular mass in each of these case we can convert the concentration terms in terms of its molar mass to do the numericals <clears throat> sometimes it so happens that abnormal molecular mass is observed it differs from the calculated molecular mass because when the solute is dissolved in the solvent then the solute can either associate to form a dimer or it can dissociate to form ions if the solute particles forms dimer then the number of particles which we add will become half of the number of particles which is assumed in the solution as a result the observed molecular mass will be half of the actual molecular mass in case if the solute undergoes dissociation and it one one solute molecule forms one solute molecule forms two ions in the solvent in that case the number of particles calculated will become double of the number of particles in the solution in such case again the molecular mass will seem to be double of its original molecular mass because the colligative property will be twice of the observed colligative property or the colligative property which is which is expected to be there because unexpectedly in the solution the particle may dissociate example could be acetic acid it forms a dimer when put in water so the acetic acids molecular mass if we calculate by finding out any of its colligative property it will be twice of the actual molecular mass to rectify this we add one correct correction factor this correction factor is called as van't hoff factor so in case of such solutes which can undergo association or dissociation we use van't hoff factor to rectify these equations of colligative properties 
the vector factor is denoted by i which is which is equal to observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property or observed molecular mass divided by calculated molecular mass so based on this there are a few numericals which will be solved by me in whiteboard through the dg pen and will be put up the link of that would be there in the description box as far as theoretical descriptions of this chapter is concerned that is over and the same will be there in the description box too some questions like the difference between ideal solution and non ideal solution can be asked or graphical interpretation of change in the colligative property like depression in boiling point and depression in freezing point can be asked which can be understood pictorially and such picture will be put up in the description box or a link in which the notes will be there in the google drive in the detail notes in the google drive you will find the topics which cannot be described by conversational words there are equations which cannot be spoken out which are written and a few problems will also be there for you to practice so you can see the description box click on the google drive link of the ms word file or google doc file and you can go through the sequence of the topic which has to be studied further hope the explanation will help you to understand the concepts which is required to be understood in the form of theory thank you